Chat. I'm John Odom, and my co-host is Jim Dandino. It was recently announced that staff at Image Comics are organizing to form a union, which is very exciting. In light of this news, Jim and I reached out to folks involved in another Geekosphere organizing story, that of workers at the Paizo role-playing game company, where only months ago workers successfully unionized. We got to talk about how it went down with Jenny Jarzabski and Joe Blomquist, and here's that conversation. Paizo, if you don't know, they're primarily known for uh, Pathfinder, Starfinder. God, you guys have you guys have Dungeon Magazine now, don't you? Uh, we did in the past, yes. I don't believe oh. that it's currently going or that we currently have it, but that is, I believe that's how the company actually started, okay. was with Dungeon Magazine. So is it still laying around? Can I go get it? Write it myself? <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> I'm sure we have copies in the warehouse <laughs> No, I mean, take it over. I want oh, right? to write it. I don't, yeah. I mean, I don't <laughs> actually know about that part of the business anyway, but hey, you never know. <laughs> why, don't you tell us, uh, why don't you tell us what you do? You're- okay, sure. Um, so I am a creative de- uh, creative developer for Starfinder. Um, so basically what I do is uh, sort of like a narrative designer, I guess, if you're thinking of it in, in like video game terminology. I'm part of the group. Uh, we call ourselves jokingly the Star Chamber or sometimes J Squadron because we have a lot of people with J first names <laughs> in our department for some reason. But uh, just just, you know of the draw, I guess. But what we do is we kind of determine the creative direction for Starfinder rules, setting content. And then I primarily work on outlining and developing modules and uh, adventure paths. So a lot of our published hardcover adventures. And Joe? So for the most part, I just do um, writing as a developer needs. Um, I've done the lion's share of my work for Jenny. She's hired me a few times to work on Starfinder Society. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've worked on uh, Pathfinder Society and some, some back matter for some of the adventure paths at the whim of a uh, developer's needs. Cool. 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 So, so Jenny, tell me, tell me your, your nerd origin story. How did you, how did you make your way <laughs> to Paizo? Uh, you know, presumably you were, uh, you're a fan of the material before you came Absolutely. into the team. Yeah, so um, I started out, I actually came to tabletop uh, RPGs a little bit later than a lot of people because some people I know started like when they were teenagers or even younger uh, playing, but I never really had, like I, I played one early um, like D&D like second edition game that I bounced off of and I didn't really get started till after college. I had a part-time job in a comic book and game store and my manager was like, hey, uh, you know, I want y'all to learn more about some of these other products we're selling. So what if I ran a game of this thing called Pathfinder? And so I played with her, uh, really enjoyed it. I started playing in like another campaign at home and I got into organized play. So Pathfinder Society. This was before Starfinder existed, obviously. Um, I've probably been involved for about 10 years now, like as, as a player and a fan. Then when Starfinder came out, I, I almost exclusively switched over to Starfinder. And in that time, I was freelancing. So I was a contract worker, just like Joe is now. Um, and I did that for quite a bit. And about uh, a couple of years ago, I started doing like longer contract development as well as writing. And about a year ago, I came on to staff full time as an official employee of Paizo. So, yes, I did start out as a player and then freelance writing before they decided to snag me into more permanent employment. Joe? All right. So uh, I have a lot more of a storied uh, story than uh, Jim did because <laughs> I've been I've been hardcore nerd time since uh, 1982. Two. Oh, wow. oh, dude, um, you were my <laughs> generation. When you were <laughs> three? <laughs> no, no, no. I was, uh, I, I, I mean, I was like eight. So yeah. Um, but, um, but I started out with, um, with comic books and D&D. I'm a, I'm a little nerd from Long Island. So for me, uh, it was all about local Long Island characters like Nova and, and Spider-Man and, and things like that. And, um, and I mixed comic books and uh, gaming through early D&D and early Marvel superheroes. So I started writing outside of this industry about 25 years ago. And then, 
in 2010, I got hired to work on Smallville's role-playing game. And right after that, I got to work on the uh, Marvel heroic role-playing game, which meant that I got to write my favorite character, which was Nova. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the then Richard that- Ryder one, I assume. Well, I like I like the the more recent Nova as well, but yes, Richard Ryder is the um, the one true Nova Prime. Um, however, um, so I worked in the industry for about a decade before I lucked out through a Facebook friend to work on um, a Pathfinder book for Bestiary Two of the most recent Pathfinder Second Edition, and then um, I'd already been playing and organizing for Pathfinder Society for a few years at that point. And then it just progressed from there. Like I kept getting work and, and apparently Jenny and Thirsty and, uh, and Mike must've liked it because they keep hiring me. <laughs> I mean, it seems like just a, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It seems like a good sign if you keep getting the work. Right. Um, <laughs> so, so you guys came to Paizo, Joe, you're freelance and Jenny, you're full time. Mm-hmm. Um, how did the, where did the unionization drive kind of spring from? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So I, I am a relatively new, like full-time employee. I mean, I guess it's been like over a year, but I'm still like, there's people that have worked at Paizo for like 10 years or more. So I would, I would consider myself kind of like the newer generation of Paizo. Um, so I'd heard that there had been other attempts in the past for people to unionize. Uh, to me, it's something that I was just kind of shocked when I came in because in in my past life, before I I worked full-time on RPGs, I was a teacher and I was in a teacher's union. So I, I saw that as normal. Um, and my dad growing up was in United aerospace worker. So I, I saw this as like, why don't we have one? And I I kind of was asking around like tentatively and it was just kind of like, well, that's just not something we have in this industry or our company is very small. So, well, we didn't really need Need one. But you know, there's it, there's been over the years, like it, it's a common complaint in a lot of the creative industries that you know pay isn't as good as it could be. And you know, you're you have to relocate to live in expensive cities like such as Seattle or New York City or LA. This is kind of uh, something that anyone who works on comics or you know, acting or anything will like will realize they'll recognize that as like, oh yeah, we've dealt with this. And so we had those kind of concerns um, as well as like maybe not the the best workplace environment at times, according to some people. So uh, there was kind of this like there was a need for it. And then about I guess it's almost been two months now. I I don't know what time is anymore, (laughs) but (laughs) there. uh, So a couple months ago, there was a an employee of ours who was let go um, without really reason given. This was a person who'd work in who'd worked with the company for like 12 years, very respected by staff and our community as well. And it kind of caused this domino effect of uh, another person quit in solidarity with her. Then there were some allegations uh, that got very like a lot of notice on Twitter about past issues in the company. And we just kind of were in this weird situation where Paizo was actually like trending almost. It was, it was like people that I had never heard of were, you know, talking about this and there were hashtags and I had reporters messaging me asking if I wanted to be interviewed about the work conditions at Paizo. And I'm just like, what the hell? I work at this tiny little RPG company. What's going on? Um, And we, all the employees and our freelancers kind of like had to come together and lean on each other for support because it was very stressful and it was very surprising. But in that moment, every, all these little uh, cells of people that have been talking about unionizing kind of came together and started talking. And we realized, Hey, we can actually do this. And that public notice, like the public eye being on us allowed us to have momentum to uh, like basically accelerate a timeline that we'd already been working on. So that's kind of where the drive more recently came from. And I'm going to, I'm going to kick it to Joe, or at least give him and the freelancers some credit here, because what they did was unknown to all of us as staff when they heard of these allegations and they got what they felt was a non-satisfactory response from our executives, they took it upon themselves to organize. Uh, they, they can't form a union. They could form a guild perhaps, but they're, you know, they're not, uh, 
they're contractors, but they got together and they sent emails and said, Hey, we're, we're refusing to do work for Paizo until Paizo acknowledges these allegations and takes actual concrete steps to address, uh, working conditions for the staff. So they basically stood up for us like in solidarity before we even did anything. Um, and so that pressured the company. So I, I don't know, Joe can probably talk a little more about that. It was um, uncomfortable is a good word for it. So <laughs> these allegations came out the week before Gen Con and oh, Gen yeah. Con is essentially Christmas for nerds. For us, it was, you know, it's <laughs> right. the biggest convention in the, in the States for, for the things that we love. So the timing was already bad. And thankfully, since we've all been home since COVID, we haven't been at conventions as much. So communication was a little easier for us than it had ever been in the past for freelancers. We, we all kind of got together and supported each other. And we found ourselves in a bunch of different discord rooms and different conversations, all freaking out about these allegations and finally decided we should all be talking together. And it was happening in a vacuum. We didn't have staff with us talking about it. We didn't know what was going on behind the scenes for them. All we had was, what do we do in this situation? How do we, how do we deal with this? And uh, a whole lot of us said, we need to withhold. We need to not, not continue the work that we're doing. At the time, I was contracted to work directly for Jenny. And I am panicking because we're doing this because People like Jenny were freelancers. They're our friends. They're, they're helping to mentor us. They're helping to, to make us better writers and include us in, in everything that they can. And they're in crisis. It's happening to them and we can't deal with that. So we all sent these letters. Not everyone could. There were people that rely on their freelancing work for their paycheck. And that was cool too. Look, everyone do what you can was, was kind of the way we felt. And we all sent these letters to say, we're not taking any more work. We can't, some of us can't complete the things we're already contracted to do. We're panicking about it. We have no idea what you think, but this is how we, we feel. And then Gen Con happened. Okay. And so you're not actually in the union then, the freelancers. You're just no, supporting. Oh, we can't okay. Be. Um, I misunderstood. Well, I was very curious how that yeah, was no, going to work. We could, <laughs> uh, we could independently try to form something like a, a guild or a um, um mutually beneficial association of some kind, but um, it doesn't necessarily have the same kind of bargaining power or anything like that that a union does. Definitely does not have the protections that a union does. Okay. Um, that hasn't happened, uh, and it may in the future, but currently there's nothing for us yet. It's, so it, again, it's complicated. It is. It's really complicated. And But so working in a vacuum on this whole concept and saying we're, we're not going to do this thing, we hope it's okay with you because we have to do it for you. <laughs> And then um, we all showed up to kind of still let the the developers know how much we cared when they were trying to talk about the new products on Gen Con's feeds. And we got to see for ourselves. They they saw what we were doing. They saw why. This, this had to have been terrifying because on, on Jenny, on your side, you know, you're in an industry that kind of tells you that you know, the legion of fans that, that are all just waiting for a foot in the door and yeah. you can be replaced at the drop of a hat. And Joe, as a freelancer, you're actually like living that, right? There's there's even less institutional protections for you. They can just dump you for somebody that they pull off of AO3 any day. Um, how How much precarity was there when you guys decided to make that jump um and and how how long how long were you really worried i was worried until the day the union was announced i wasn't even okay. i i wasn't worried that paizo wouldn't voluntarily see the union and, and recognize it because it, it seemed an obvious choice and paizo was mm-hmm. trying to work on well but paizo was trying to work on his on its image it yeah. needed to figure out how to do those things correctly and that was the correct move well, and especially, <laughs> I lived in the, in the uh, actually, I lived in Portland for a while. And as I recall, Redmond and a lot of those towns up there are, are pretty groovy. 
So yes. I would yes. imagine the wrath of God would have fallen on them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine so. And I, well, I was, and as for my part, and I can't speak for all my coworkers, but we were having conversations, like we'd set up a discord to talk about union business, but also to kind of support each other, like emotionally through the process of everything. Um, and, and it was actually really cool because I got to know a lot of my coworkers who I didn't know as well, especially because of working uh, remotely during COVID. Um, but we talked about it a lot. And it's like what I was really I'm like, yeah, they could fire us all. But what the really what the freelancers did was so important to this because they are the pool of people who the, the company could have theoretically pulled scabs from. Like they are the first pool. You know, that's where I came from. Like there are many of us at Paizo who started as a freelancer. Um, and we're prolific freelancers who, you know, were then asked like to apply or, or we were just kind of like almost shortlisted because we're already familiar with this material and we've already proven ourselves in a way. So, you know, instead of a portfolio, like our portfolio is look at the projects I've published that that you've developed already. Like, you know what my work is. Um, and so we we realized that if we were let go the freelancers would be the people they would that they could call like call from and say hey you you can get a job now but they had already removed themselves from the playing field because they'd said no we're we're in solidarity with you staff and uh we are we are trying to you know work for better conditions for you so there was some uh there was some safety in that what i was really worried about though was someone in uh, some executive coming and saying you can't ever hire any of these people again. And like, we don't have a blacklist. We don't, we don't believe in that in terms of freelancers or, or contractors of any kind. But I was a little worried that they would come in and say, well, yeah, these people kind of screwed us over. So you can't, you know, and I was like, I felt like they hadn't screwed us over. I felt, you know, supported in solidarity with them, but you know, the people in charge of the money might not see that the same way as, as I did. So I was right. worried, but you know, that never happened, thankfully. <laughs> it didn't. And, and uh, so tell me more about what you guys were looking for from the company um, when freelancers said pens down and, and the staff mm. um, announced their organization. You want to do that, Jenny? Or? Yeah, I can start. Well, I can start for staff and then you can come in for freelancers. Okay. So for staff, uh, we're actually, as of right now, our next step is we're working on a bargaining survey because now that we've been uh, organized or recognized, we're going to elect a couple of like negotiators, like a bargaining team. And mm -hmm. we're trying to decide like what we want to work on first when we meet with leadership for our contract. But we, um, so right now we are are no longer at will employees because Washington state is an at will state. Uh, so that already is an, is an improvement. We're now protected. Like we have, you know, they, they can't fire us for no reason. They have to have a reason they can, they can terminate an employee of course, but they can't just say, well, we just did like, you know, we don't have to tell you why, um, right. which is an improvement, but we wanted that. But what we also want is we want improved salaries. Um, what we're paid and, and some of it is the industry, yes, but what we are paid for where we live is horrible. Um, and what we would like to do is see financial transparency so that we can work with the executives and say, hey, we're spending money, you know, do we, can we afford to pay more? If we can't afford to pay a lot more, so be it. But, you know, we could probably raise some of these salaries that haven't been raised in, in like a decade. Um, you know, some of our editors are making like 35 K, uh, a year to live in Redmond where the average cost of a house is $1.2 million. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's like, I know a lot of people who are living like two to three to a little apartments, um, just because yeah. that's all they can afford. Uh, I mean, I live in a little shoe box myself, <laughs> which I yeah. like it, but it's like, I, I don't have another option realistically. Um, so, so we want to see like a better, uh, and we also want to see pay equity across, uh, positions that are equivalent. Like we don't want to see, a developer be, just because they're they're like a, a different gender or they've been around a bit longer being paid significantly more like there's something to be said for seniority and experience but 
if someone's making like 10,000 more than I am a year, there, there really ought to be a good reason, or they, they yeah. really should be a higher uh, position in the company. So those are kind of the main things we're pushing for. Um, mm-hmm. Again, we're working with the whole group of employees to decide what it is we really uh, care about. And there may be other things, but that's kind of what we're looking for is just more, more transparency and more financial security in our jobs. <laughs> The the transparency thing is is a, a often underrated um, factor in yeah. unionizing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I know I, I, a lot of um, bosses don't want to share that information, but I think it's critical to help assess the health of your workplace, right? Right. So, um, Joe, what were what were the what were the freelancers looking for? Initially, it was pretty much everything Jenny just said. We, you know, we, it was about the working conditions of the people that we worked with at Paizo. We, we weren't satisfied with what we were hearing. Um, right. That took a hard pivot the day they announced they were going to make a union. Because at that point, you know, we knew that whatever efforts we were making was, was only going to have so much of an effect. Mm-hmm. A union is far better prepared to, to talk about the problems that are going on in the workplace than, than people who are outside looking in. Um, so the day that, that we found out that the union was announced, then we were like, okay, let's send a new letter. Let's say we will all go back to work today if Paizo voluntarily recognizes the union because that became our, our only goal because we yeah. knew that that union could protect people like Jenny, which was important to us. Well, let, let me ask you the question that's sort of the obvious question, and it's also the question you can't answer, I would say, but I'm going to ask it anyway, so you know, I'll get it off my chest. Um, or I actually, you will answer, but there's only one way you can probably answer it regardless. Uh, so it's one thing to voluntarily recognize the union. It's another thing to be a good bargaining partner. Mm-hmm. Um, have you felt like you've been dealt with in, in good faith? Well, I mean, and I, I see what you mean about there's really only one way I can answer that. Uh, it's like, like twice if you're, you know, no. Well, but- <laughs> I've asked. I asked. I had to ask. Yeah, yeah. We're an audio podcast. You can blink all you want. Okay. <laughs> well, I will say we, we haven't started formal negotiations yet and bargaining. So so I can kind of get out of jail free card on that one because like, well, we haven't really started the process. But I do feel um, I do feel like so far in having some conversations with some of the leadership people that they do see, like at least some of them see the need for this to happen and they also feel positively about it. So I have reasonable expectations that there might be some bumps in the road, but that I think, you know, at least some of them will engage with us respectfully. And I think because they have like, you know, they, they know um, in terms of public opinion, it needs to, it needs to improve after the the nosedive that we had um, a few months ago. And also just, you know, there's pressure on them from us, from the community, you know, from our freelancers. There's also, you know, they have a lawyer uh, and, and like advisors who are telling them, yes, this is this is good. So I think that I, I have a reason to believe it will be in good faith. Um, and so far, nobody has made our lives miserable at work. So <laughs> that's a good sign. <laughs> that is a good, a good sign. sign. That's a very good sign. Yeah. Um, why CWA? Uh, like when I think of communications workers of America, I think of Verizon line workers. Right. right? Yeah. I don't think of I don't think of uh, pe- folks writing tabletop role playing modules. Yeah. So we we had a few different unions to choose from, and we've kind of spoken about different options. But we we'd already had a line to CWA that we'd started a few months prior to the acceleration of everything. And what we, well, CWA, actually Code CWA specifically has this vision to kind of unionize like game workers and tech. Now we're not really tech. We do have digital products and we do kind of exist in a, in a quasi digital space, but you know, we are primarily a publisher, like we make print products, but we, we felt like we fit better there, um, especially after meeting the, the representatives that we were working with. We mm-hmm. felt like it worked and we really do hope that we can be kind of, you know, the beginning of a wave of other game companies, like maybe, maybe what, like Wizards or I guess technically Hasbro um, and other right. like actual video game companies. And, and, you know, even though what we do is different, there's enough similarities there that we felt it was a good fit. 
And it just, I don't know, we talked about it and they, they were a good fit for us. Uh, and we, and this is all of our workers, by the way, it's not just editorial. This is our customer service, our warehouse workers. And, you know, okay. they could have gone to the Teamsters or something, right. but they, they decided that we would all be a bargaining unit together. So. Right. And, and, you know, I, I kind of by the same token, not to, not to give bosses any credit, which I am loath to do, but, <laughs> um, you know, Paizo could have pushed to have the warehouse workers be Teamsters, right? Paizo yeah. could have pushed to have the customer service reps in a, in a different unit and, and to voluntarily yeah. recognize you is I think, I, I think a sign of at least some good faith. So I think, I think yes. seems like, it seems like you're on the right track. You guys are on the right track. So I guess like a bigger picture question here, you've got you guys, we've got image, we've got some, we've got some talk of organizing in video games. What do you think is why now, why is now when geek culture is getting organized, right? Like, what is it, what is it about the time and place that we're in that, that you think is pushing workers in geek and nerdy context to say it's time? For me, uh, I would say that I, I feel like we're at the beginning of a second labor movement in the United States right now, it seems, and honestly, across the world. I mean, we've seen like there was a general strike in uh, in South Korea recently. It was like mm-hmm. millions of people that were marching and like, you know, general strike. So I, I think that it's a little bit of the zeitgeist right now that there are many industries that are unionizing that weren't before or, or if unions are expanding. So I think it's part of just the general, you know, feel and, and kind of the mindset of people right now. But I also think it's like we've been through we've been through a lot in the gaming and like nerd industry. Like there's been it's just like there's been years of allegations about like people in power that were abusive. And I mean, you know, look at what happened at Blizzard recently, like that, right. you know, there were these uh, like abusive managers and there was this culture that was exclusionary to like, you know, women working at the company and there was sexual harassment and all this. And it's just, this has just kind of been building, I think. And I think now because of the wider culture of, Hey, unions are, unions are good. again. I mean, they've always been good, but like unions are cool again. I think some of that has, it's just time. Like it's just built up. And now it's like, well, what do we really do? I mean, we can wait for these companies to realize that they're being like terrible, um, which I don't know that they will unless their profit margins are messed with, or we can take matters into our own hands. Because for us, this really is positive. It's not that, you know, a lot of us, like, we don't really feel that we've been abused or anything. It's just more right. like our our leadership had decided they realize we need to change. We need to improve um, ourselves, but also the wider industry. And that's us saying, well, okay, we're going to help you. Like, we're not leaving it all to you. We're going to, we're going to unionize because that's taking it into our own hands. And I think more workplaces in like comics and games are starting to come to that same conclusion. Just, you know, the general yeah. zeitgeist. I also think you need to think about societal catalysts there too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you were looking at a time period where information is provided in such a large degree compared to any time in the past that it makes it rife for a new labor movement. And you add with that um, everyone going through lockdown for coronavirus, which lets you understand how important fetish properties like gaming and comics are to us and yeah. how much they get us through yeah. our day, that it puts all of that stuff under a microscope and, and lets us really go back and, and take a real hard look at, well, what goes into making these things and why are they important? And I don't think we've ever had that in the past for these industries. I was really interested when you mentioned that, that the freelancers kind of got together over Discord. Um, did, had you guys been siloed previously? Or, or did, did the pand- you said the pandemic kind of brought everybody closer together? On the yes. Side. So one of the best things to come out of Paizo has been a um, meetup for freelancers at PaizoCon. Okay. And um, two PaizoCons ago was the, you know, PaizoCon 2020 was the very first time that PaizoCon was entirely online. And so people weren't meeting up in person. So what we did was we had a room in the PaizoCon Discord where we all kind of just got to know each other. And it seems that the freelancers are are very like-minded. It's a generalization, but it seems 
pretty accurate because we're all incredibly supportive of each other. We're we're excited about each other's products. We want to see what they're doing and and how we can kind of not necessarily compete, but encourage each other. And so we had these rooms in PaizoCon to the point where despite it being an online convention, if you guys have ever been to conventions before, you'll know when I say you get con drop at the end of the convention, because it's just sad that all of these convention friends, you're not going to be around for yep. another year. And that changed with PaizoCon. We had this room. We had this place to meet. We got to be friends. Long-term games started in that room that we're still playing today, you know, a year and a half, two years later. And, and so that thing that started at PaizoCon created another Discord where everyone that was there gets to be a part of and, and staff is in that room as well. Needless to say, when the allegations came, we all kind of went into our own corners and yeah. were like, we don't know what we could say to staff. So let's just kind of do our own thing. And, and eventually it was like, well, there's too many different conversations. Let's just have one conversation alone. Um, but yeah, the, we, we've now for 18 plus months been together, been able to interact with each other in a way that we never could before. Cause we're throughout the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's um, a sense then that particularly the freelancer involvement here, that lightning kind of struck. It was the yeah. right place at the right time. It was a perfect storm in a good way, yes. but that, but that does make it at least conceptually more difficult for, um, you know, for other similar organizing efforts. And again, I'm thinking about image here where, you know, getting the freelancers on board at image would be uh, enormous, but that, you know, that connection doesn't exist there given that it's CWA. Is there any thought of, of sort of reaching out freelancers to freelancers to try to make some of that connection? Or is that, you know, something that there might it's, be an opportunity for in the future? It is definitely something there is an opportunity for. Um, I will say that all of us seem to work on the same products with Paizo freelancers, and we're all very much like-minded. And that might be due to the the grooming that happened from our developers. Uh, mm. So. I don't know that it's easy for us to talk to other freelancers. I have freelanced in other industries and, and I haven't had the sense of community that I currently have amongst Paizo or TTRPG freelancers. Cause I've, I've talked to freelancers that are outside of the Paizo sphere, but that being said, it's not impossible because now we have something that yes, we had lightning in a bottle, but now we have an example mm-hmm. of what can be done. And that's, again, it's, it's something that hasn't happened. So Image though, image makes me sad in a in like metallic of trying to sue Napster levels yeah. of sad. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's exactly what it is. Right I hadn't thought of it until you said it, but oh my God, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Oh and then Todd McFarland doing NFTs today too. Uh, that's oh totally God. totally unrelated to anything we're talking about. But uh God, just yeah. never meet your heroes, right? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and and follow your own model. I mean, Image started as as hey, we want to be creator owned because the contracts that we signed with Marvel and DC doesn't allow for that. So let's make our own characters, right? Just like Metallica started by making copies of their tape and giving it out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And yep. You know, it's funny because in a way, I mean, that's Paizo's story or similar to Paizo's story as well, because, you know, we started from a lot of people that worked at TSR, which then got bought by wizards and either they were laid off or they just kind of came away from that feeling like they wanted to do their own thing. And they, they, you know, some of them didn't like it when fourth edition happened too. So it's like, all right, so we'll just do like 3.5, which is like 3.75. Cause that, you know, that was Pathfinder first edition. And yep. so it's funny because I think that some of our more canny uh, executives and leadership people realize that, especially when they saw the support for, for like staff members, not just the company, but like me and my coworkers and like us and what we did by the freelancers and community, they're like, Oh God, they could, they could do the same thing. Um, Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we don't want to do that. Really. We, we like where we're at. It's just, it, it is funny though, because image seems to have kind of failed that test and kind of stumbled there. But mm-hmm. uh, but Paizo, I, I will say I do have hope because for all Paizo's you know faults, it is a company made of flawed people like anything sure. else. They decided, hey, you know what? For whatever reason, we are going to just approve of this and we're going to work with this. So 
there is hope that Paizo still kind of has those roots of, you know, independence and wanting to change and, and be more progressive. So, you know, but it's, it, it could have, that could have been us, like what what's happening with image, you well, know? And it, Jenny, it's gotta be edifying to you to work in an industry that I feel like depersonalizes the contributions to yeah. the story, to the narrative, right? Like you're not, you're not, um, you know, a, a, a Grant Morrison, right? Like your, your name is not plastered all over the front of um, the, the books that you guys are putting out, but to have a community be. that, it, no, it totally, <laughs> it totally should be, it totally should be. And well, you maybe it, that's one of the things, maybe that's one of the things that goes into the contract. Who knows, you know, um, yeah. but to, to have a, a, a fan base and a community that recognizes your contributions to the point where they're trying to strong arm the company on your behalf has to, has to be rewarding, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, it's humbling and it, it's pretty overwhelming. Like uh, the first, you know, the first moments of this happening were kind of an emotional roller coaster because it's, you know, on the one hand, this is very, like, there's a lot of stressful things and a lot of uncertainty, but it's like, wow, these people actually really like, they like me, they like us. Like they think we're, we're good at what we do and they like working with us. So, and it is hard because a lot of times, especially in the pandemic, it almost feels like a thankless job. Sometimes like you'll see the, the reviews on the site are often, I mean, people leave reviews when they feel intense, intensely emotional. Usually it's negative. Like they they get mad. They had a bad experience. They want to complain. Um, sometimes they're excited because it was so awesome that they want to praise it, but usually it's, it's bad. (laughs) So it's like, (laughs) We're, we're seeing that. And normally in a normal year, we'd like, as Joe was saying earlier, we'd go to these conventions and we would have, especially PaizoCon. Um, I have not been to a PaizoCon as staff. I've gone as a fan. I've gone as a freelancer, but I have heard that it's basically like being a celebrity for a weekend even in a small community, as well as seeing all your friends, because it's like, oh, wow, like we, we know all these people's credits and oh gosh, that person wrote, you know, this adventure and this person, you know, created this God that is in the setting. So I didn't get to have, like, I and my coworkers didn't have that this year. So we, we felt very isolated from each other as well. Um, especially someone like me who is, who is newer to the company. So this was just really incredible to feel that support and, you know, in, in some ways, I don't know if it could have happened. Like, like we were saying, uh, on, in another year, uh, it was just kind of a lot of the perfect storm factors coming together, but it was, it's pretty cool because we weren't getting that feedback, uh, before the freelancers in the community kind of stuck out their necks for us. Awesome. So yeah, thanks Joe. And thanks, thanks to all the freelancers. I've said it a billion times, but it's pretty awesome. I, I agree. So you had made reference earlier, and this is sort of a broad general question, but to, you know, issues of, of, of harassment and stuff. And a lot of these, you know, a lot of these spheres, a lot of these, these nerd geek spheres that we're talking yeah. about, but um, I mean, that can't be overstated. The uh, I mean, the, the comics industry is wrestling with a lot of it and God, you know, Gamergate, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to the extent it's, gate. And, and comics yeah. gate, right, right, yeah, no, exactly yep. right. We've talked about that on on this this program. You talk to a lot of sort of the old school traditional organizers, and it's all about economics. It's all you know the all the other sort of divisions of people sort of fall away into this sort of old you know sort of intellectualized left wing model of what organizing is about. But that seems like, you know, organizing around those issues seems to be an inevitable, I mean, as big or bigger a part of it than the economics these days. And that would seem to me to really change the entire face of organizing, the entire face of unions. Is that, how is that going to happen? I mean, that's, that's a really good question, but it, it is, it is very different. And for, so for one thing, I can give an example of, I guess this, this probably is relates to that. Uh, so Paizo, you know, we're a small company. Um, so normally like a company like Paizo couldn't support its own union. I mean, we could bargain, but 
we wouldn't have enough employees and enough financial pool with like our, our dues. Cause you know, and for anyone who doesn't know dues are really small, it won't even happen until we've like ratified our contract. And it's like maybe 1% of our earnings. So like, it's like, if you get a raise, especially because of it, you're not even going to miss that. Um, really, but our, that is not enough money to have a union hall or to have like, you know, to do things like, get one of our a CWA person to help us at the bargaining table for our first contracts. But we've joined a, con- a conglomeration of smaller unions like us. And so it's very different because we, these little groups have to come together to have like the economic ability to support a union within CWA, like to support a local. So it's just stuff like that. Like these little companies wouldn't have, have had the economic viability to do this in the past, but because we've made these connections and like, we're going to make connections with these folks as well. um, We're able to do it. So yeah, it is, it is more of a, you know, personality and connections with other people thing. And I, I also just think that's, that's probably a symptom of social media and everything like the internet being so prevalent. Like now we're all so connected. Sometimes it's not the best. Sometimes it is positive. And I think this is one of those times that it, it's just changed and it's going to have to change, obviously. Um, like if we're not in a, in a physical workplace, for instance, we can't pass out pamphlets and we can't, you know, go talk to people at lunch. It's instead it's digital. We, we send messages. Like we have a discord too, just like the freelancers. Uh, it actually started as, um, in our, in our lore, uh, Milani is the goddess of like uprisings, rebellion, stuff like that. And her, one of her names is the Everbloom. So, uh, when I created the server for us to like talk on, cause we'd had, we'd had all these like conversations separately. I called it Everbloom and we now have a more official server, but Everbloom remains like a, like a lobby for current and former employees and our, and like allies to just chat and like, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll share memes or we'll talk to each other. We'll, we'll vent or praise things. And that's a part of our union. So I, I see that as going forward, you know, digital stuff is going to be more important than like passing out pamphlets. Um, Mm -hmm. will, will marching or like a strike or sit in or anything. That's not even, that may not even be a thing. Like demonstrations might be fully digital in terms of like, we're just going to all change our Twitter icons or like. Uh, I think since this is a podcast, the the listeners can't really see this, but like my Zoom background is the United Paizo Workers logo. And that was one of our first things we wanted to do for visibility was change all of, we changed all our Zoom backgrounds. We changed our social media banners and profile pics and like, but, and that's different in the past. That would have been, we're going to stand outside the workplace with signs. Right. Mm -hmm. But in Mm -hmm. in a digital environment, no, like we're, we're, a lot of us are remote still. So no, we're going to just do it on zoom where we meet. So it's, yeah, it's, it's already changing. It's pretty interesting. Not so much of the linking arms and singing uh, with Guthrie. And get an animated gif of Scabby the rat. Pretty much. And we might (laughs) set that to Woody Guthrie, but. (laughs) Oh, now I want Scabby as my avatar. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I definitely have to go out when we when we end this with some old school labor music instead of our our usual theme. I'm going to have a lot of fun picking that out. That's rage against the machine. We'll edit that out. Just yeah, nothing yeah. but rage against the machine. Yeah, we, oh yes, we had a we had a music channel in ever. We still do, but this was in the early days of of us trying to organize. Um, we had a music channel, and it was a lot of. There were some old school songs, but it's a lot of things like you know, rage against the machine, like run the jewels, like kind of yep. all the you know that kind mm-hmm. of music. Um, and we're not necessarily angry, but it it kind of gets you pumped up to <laughs> to do the work yeah. and be in that headspace. So. Yep. You don't need to be angry for Rage Against no. the Machine. You just need no. to be passionate and dedicated. Exactly. But there's nothing wrong with a little anger. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. like John Lydon said, anger is an energy. There you go. Yep. That's it my Jack Johnny Rotten Rotten said, comment. Anger is a gift. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm bad. <laughs> I'm wondering if you all have talked to anybody else in the, in the Northwest, you know, that again, groovy, that whole corridor there, there seemed like there's some regional dominoes that could fall here Mm -hmm. well um i mean image that those workers are in portland uh so they are oh that's right i forgot Mm -hmm. about that uh we have the half price books in this area is trying to unionize and we've we've at least supported them on social media so again 
a lot of it is a lot of this is social media based rather than meeting in person, um, just especially because of the pandemic. And I'm still, you know, I'm meeting with friends, but I'm still not super big on having a huge group of people. So uh, mm-hmm. just just for safety's sake. But yeah, uh, we've supported them. Um, I, I'm, I don't know what's going on. If Wizards employees are starting to uh, to have the the thoughts kind of I'm sure they are like, I'm sure the wheels are turning and. I'm sure their bosses are uh, a little nervous and (laughs) perhaps, you know, perhaps they should be, but again, it doesn't have to be combative or scary. It's, it's positive. It's like, accept that your workers for, to unionize your workers have to care about their jobs and their workplace. Because Hmm. if I, I could, you know, we could have just quit and gone and worked in another industry and made like twice the money. You know, I, I, I don't expect to get that kind of a pay increase as the result of this. I just expect it to be brought up a little bit to, to better reflect cost of living, but it's because I want to be involved in these products. And I really love Starfinder and Pathfinder that I'm doing this, not, not because I want to get like a payout or something. And I I really think that as these more nerd companies kind of start unionizing the, the bosses really need to sit there and realize like, it's not because these people are are trying to like sit, you know suck you dry. It's they're not they don't hate you. They they may be angry about things that have happened, but it's because they're passionate. And you should realize that these are dedicated employees because unionizing is like you care. Uh, quitting is well, whatever. I, I'm done with that. That's too frustrating. I don't want to deal with it. So yep. That's such yeah. a great way to put it all. God, you all make me want to dump my day job and come work for you. I mean, that, <laughs> that was so great. I, yeah. I mean, I've been working in labor politics for 20 years now, and I've never heard it put better than that. Well, thank you. Um, I try. <laughs> sometimes I sometimes I do come up with words for a living, so I try. <laughs> <laughs> you did, might help a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm excited for you guys. I'm really, I'm, I'm really grateful that you guys took the time to chat with us today. Yeah. I'm really excited about what the future holds for Paizo Workers Union and, and for Paizo in general, if they're going to continue moving forward in good faith like this. Yeah. And we'd love to have you all come back sometime and tell us how it's going. Yeah. Sure. Come back after yeah. you get your contract. We'll, yeah. we'll have a, uh, an, an adult beverage together. Nice. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> all right. Come all you poor workers, good news Our theme you music is by Christopher Piatic, although not so much this song. That's come in here to dwell. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? We're starting our good battle. We know we're sure to win. Because we've got the gun thugs a looking very thin. Which side are you on? Which side are you on?